Hey guys, welcome to Mixed Media Salad, a channel created for you, by you. And today I'm going to cover this project that I worked on. Um, one of the users from the Affinity Designer Forum messaged me and wanted to know how I was able to create this image. Um, I think the question stems from the fact that this is a vector application and people are looking for ways to kind of soften up their artwork uh, within this application. So I'm going to try to explain what I did to kind of create this image okay so let's take a look over here at the layers and if your layers are over here you can move things around just by docking them just so that you know that's why mine is over here I, I'm left-handed I kind of like things to the left anyway so if you look over here the signature is right here on the top bottom and if you guys aren't doing this, make sure that you label your layers. It just makes it so much easier for you to find things. I think just by looking at this, you could tell what is what, okay? Uh, dandelion snow. I didn't know if I was making snow or if I was making dandelion, but I kind of wanted a soft feel. So I created this brush, and it's a pixel-based brush. And I just dropped it on its own layer, and I just kind of clicked around and painted on some of these little dandelions okay so that's all I did there the food particles are actually um, little bits of, of vectors that I kind of you know just made with the pen tool and spread that around here so it just looks like a little bit of food debris or something that's on the ground the orange hearts they are actually made, made by the um, built-in heart shape that's in affinity designer and the reason the way that I was able to um, get them to be kind of soft is I actually put an effect on them and I put a little Gaussian blur and that kind of softens things if you haven't noticed that so let me just show you there you see that's exactly the vector of that heart okay and I just put a little Gaussian on it and that just softens things up okay so that's how that was created um, and oh, if you haven't noticed too, guys, if you double click on the actual image itself, it'll actually zoom into that particular area of your uh, project so you could focus on that object. So uh, if you didn't know that, there's a little quick tip for you. And to get out of that, just do command zero and that'll bring everything in your uh, in your project in view. OK. Um, so the shoelace, actually, the shoelace was actually created um, with a, uh, vector brush or vector based brush that I created in affinity designer for a user who was looking for some sort of stitch work that they were working on. I think they do a lot of sewing or, you know, um, patchwork or something like that. And they needed a stitch and they didn't know how to make that brush. So I created a brush for them and I kind of just used it in this project. It looks like a piece of shoestring or something that these two birds would be kind of holding or nibbling on or a piece of spaghetti or something like that. You know, that's all I was kind of hitting at. This is all abstract. So it was just how I was feeling and I was just kind of working through the project. Um, and you see I have all the parts of that grouped together and they're all separate because I wanted the illusion of going in one side and coming out the other to add a little dimension to it, even though it is very much 2D. Um, the two birds are actually duplicates of each other, and I'll just kind of go through one real quick here. The two birds, if I open this up, <clears throat> the tail feathers are just simple vectors. Um, they, they actually are... Let's see. Their opacities have been turned down. They have a... a a layer mode of add so that's how I kind of got that translucent effect or whatever that you're seeing here and um, the eyeballs the eyeballs again they are all little vector shapes simple vector shapes and they all have a little bit of a layer effect on them where this one is an inner shadow to kind of make that socket gradient that's going in between here I could have used a gradient too as well but you know, there's a lot of ways to do things, and you can choose it any which way you want in this application. Um, it's just all about technique, guys. Um, and then the shape of the bird itself, it's just a vector shape, and I used, um, I used this shape to mask a big brush 
image that I created to make those kind of like weird soft feathers. Uh, I could have done that a different way. I could apply the texture. I mean, there's just a lot of different ways you could have done that. But for this, I kind of wanted it to um, be really simple. So I kind of just made a big brush and then I masked it. And if I actually pull this out, you could see that this brush is just, you know, a series of shades that I created. And I think this brush is actually not even one. I think I made a, um, a box of some sort and then I kind of filled it in you know, with my, my brush image, you see, like it just fills it all in right here. And anyway, so all I did was, let's see, where's my shape here? All I did was I took it and I dragged it here and you drop it. And guys, if you don't, um, if you hold on to it, you can see what happens in different, different things happen as you draw, drag it to different areas. So if you're not sure, you're not getting the effect that you want just by dragging it, you could do so by just holding on to it until you see exactly what you want. And if I drag it here just to the right of it, that's the effect that I want. So I'm gonna drop that. And that's basically creating what is called a clipping mask. Okay. Um, the outside of that form here is actually a stroke and I applied this, um, this little uh, vector brush to the stroke. So that's how I got that, that little like, image there. And um, it's cutting off right here, and that's actually a, a little bug that's actually being corrected. Um, so hopefully it'll be, I think it'll be in the next version. I did bring it to Finney's attention. Um, so, you know, they're very responsive. So I'm sure that's going to be fixed in the next version. Um, let's see. And that's pretty much it. I mean, these feet, they're just little vector shapes typical vector shapes. And then I just duplicated that same bird and all those elements and I just grouped it in its own little layer and I threw a color adjustment on it. So if I turn that off, you'll see that it's the same bird. It just has a little bit of a color adjustment on that bird. Okay, maybe a little bit more blurring was applied to it. You know, um, That's that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Um, moving along, let me just close this. The ground again. I made my own pixel-based brush to kind of make that smoky effect there. And um, if you look here, if I go into the pix uh, pixel persona and you go to brushes, you'll see that I have a bunch of assorted brushes in here that I've created. Um, Actually, around these grunge brushes, I got some splatter brushes that I've created. I got some rivet heads that I've created. Um, so there's a there's a lot of little cool things that you could do just by creating a little pixel based brush. Okay, so going back into the vector persona, let's keep moving on. Um, the moon again that was just a simple circle i think i put a little outer effect outer glow effect on a, a gaussian blur on that and um actually uh, gaussian blur and i think i had an outer glow on there yeah i put a little outer glow on there okay i don't know why i just turned that off but that's what kind of gave that little moon effect right here these two shadow areas at the bottom, just to put a little ground shadow, these birds would be casting some sort of shadow on the ground, and I kind of added it there. It might be, it might need to be a little bit more apparent, but for right now, it's fine. I think, um, actually, I think it's the position. Yeah, you could say somehow I got that mixed up. Okay, so yeah, so now you have a little shadow. So you see the shadow actually automatically gave it a little bit more dimension. So, you know, keep those in mind, your lights and your shadows. And then the background, there's two variations. When I originally started, I just started with a plain black. That has a totally different feel. Colors pop a little bit differently as well on that. Um, but just by turning, the, turning those on and off, I could put different variations and different backgrounds. And that's pretty much it. That's what made up this project. And by combining all those little elements and those little techniques, you know, I was able to turn a, uh, a typical vector, very clean, hard line 
image into something a little bit softer. And that is just one approach. I mean, there are multiple approaches to doing it, um, you know, but that's this is what I used to create this image. OK, so hopefully that helps. I hope you guys got something out of that. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to tweet me at Mixed Media Salad or you can send me an email or post a comment. All right. Thanks again, guys. And looking forward to talking to you on the next video. If you like this video and you found it helpful, please hit the subscribe button.